Are we seeing signs of a voter revolt in the March 2024 primary election results? We have a full rundown and some really good news. Could California's politics be changing? It's all coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and we just got through the uh, March 2024 primary election here in California. Now, the results are not fully in yet because we no longer actually count our votes on election day. In California, it drags on for about 30 days after the election. Uh, but there is a lot of good news that I want to cover, uh, and it, it seems to suggest that the direction of California politics could be changing uh, in a more centrist or, or right way. Uh, it might be moving back towards uh, the center by moving towards the right, which is which would be good because we need political balance in California. It's been far too left uh, extremism, and that has led to one party control, a mega majority in Sacramento, and uh, really extreme policies that hurt uh, California residents. So let me first start out with the uh, dynamics. Um, there are about 2.5 million votes that have been counted so far. But millions of ballots are still outstanding. And you might say, well, Carl, why aren't they counting the ballots immediately? Let me give you uh, San Diego County as an example, since that's where I'm, I'm, I'm located. Uh, if you take a look here, sdvote.com, and you click under election results, and San Diego County has about 2 million voters, 1.931 million to be exact. So that's how many um, uh, voters uh, received ballots, because every voter that's registered gets a ballot. Um, and then uh, the number of ballots already counted is 425,000 in that county. Uh, of that, there were 374,000 in the mail and 51,000 at the vote centers. The vote centers would be people physically coming in, walking in, and voting in person. Um, the mail-in ballots would be people who either put them in drop boxes or put them in the mail, obviously. Uh, so those are the numbers. But take a look right here. Estimated ballots to be processed, 275,000. You know what that means? That these numbers and the results below will potentially change uh, uh, in many races, could actually impact the outcome in some of the races. So uh, right now, the initial results that you're seeing for key races uh, are just that, initial results subject to change as they're counting the ballots. And you might say, well, why aren't they counting uh, these ballots all in uh, one fell swoop? The 275,000 ballots here, most of those are mail-in ballots that uh, were walked into the polling centers. And instead of somebody surrendering their mail-in ballot and voting with a paper ballot to be processed immediately, uh, they're just simply dropping off their ballot at the polling center or just putting it in a drop box. Also, the mail delivery, for Monday and Tuesday contained mail ballots and the registrar of voters, at least in San Diego and most other counties, they don't even touch those mail-in ballots because they're too busy getting ready for election night. You know, they, they got to process a, a surge at the polling centers, the voting centers um, on election day. So that's why there's so many out there. Um, again, I wish we don't have this problem, uh, but that's California. If you take a look at statewide, this would suggest if, if there's 275,000 ballots still left to be counted in San Diego County, there's probably close to three to three and a half, maybe even four million ballots statewide. Uh, so the results in the California election could shift dramatically statewide as well. Um, let me compare this to 2022, the primary in 2022. Take a look at this. 674,000 ballots cast. Well, if you take 425 plus 275, that gets you 700,000 ballots. We're on track for turnout that's about the same as 2022. Um, I actually think it's going to come in a little lower than 2022 by a smidge, um, or maybe even right at the right on the money. But I don't think it's going to be higher than 2022. Um, so it'll take a while for these 275,000 ballots to be um, processed. What they do is they they process the mail-in ballots. Uh, usually about 30 to 40,000 mail-in ballots a day. So that means it's going to take about a week uh, to get through this, maybe a week and a half. 
And then they go on to things called the provisional ballots. And then, of course, there will be a bunch of ballots left over that uh, there was a signature mismatch or no signature at all. And they they hold on to those to give voters a 30 day period to correct their signatures. Um, our campaign at Reform California in target seats, um, we do a lot of work to, to our, try to advise voters that their signature might have been discarded and that they need to go cure. That's called curing the signature um, in the election. If you want to track to see if your ballot was indeed counted, go to our website, trackmyballot.org, trackmyballot.org. Click under track my ballot and you can search to see if your ballot was counted. Um, those of you who dropped off your ballot on uh, um, Monday or Tuesday, uh, either through the mailing system or a Dropbox, you are probably one of these 275,000 people, at least in San Diego, statewide, same thing. Uh, so please go to trackmyballot.org and make sure that that ballot is counted in the next two weeks, okay? All right, so uh, let me go through some of the interesting results and I'm really excited because, well, first, let me talk about my own race. Um, as many of you know, I'm working to create something called the Reform California Caucus in Sacramento in the legislature by electing fighters to the California State Senate and State Assembly who are gonna basically shake the system up. I'm sick and tired of mamsy pamsy, go along, get along Republicans who don't do anything, who cower, who uh, don't put up a fight and aren't speaking out and giving us a voice. Uh, there are some good Republicans in Sacramento, but there are a lot of Republicans that have given up the fight or don't know how to fight. So the Reform California Caucus is designed specifically to create a team of fighters to kind of shake things up and change the culture on the Republican side of the aisle. I don't think we can break the super minority, a super majority of Democrats, unless you get the Republican Party back into shape back into a fighting uh, um, um, fighting party. Um, and in my race, we've been able to um, uh, withstand $1.4 million in uh, negative attack ads from the Sacramento swamp. Uh, in the last four weeks of this election, they've spent $1.4 million uh, on deceptive, misleading, false ads attacking me every single day. Uh, and yet the voters have spoken 44%, 43.84 at this moment have uh, backed me in our, in our uh, reform California mandate to make change happen in California. And it looks like, uh, well, you know, it doesn't matter who I'm going to face off in November, whether it's the Democrat Kevin Jews or Andrew, Hay Andrew Hayes, the Republican, this guy's a rhino. Uh, this guy's a Democrat and either of them will be the Sacramento swamps um, uh, stoogie. Uh, it's never going to be about their qualifications. The Sacramento Swamp will attack me because they want one of their stoogies to take the seat and do their bidding. Um, they know that they can't control me. They know that I'm a fighter. And so I'm grateful that the voters of the 75th district um, uh, supported me in the primary and has, have sent such a strong message that we're poised to win in the general election, no matter what the Sacramento Swamp does. Now, I could only produce that number with your support. So uh, we've exhausted a lot of our resources on our campaign. Please go to the website, reformcalifornia.org, reformcalifornia.org, and ship in a contribution so we can recharge our batteries. A couple other races that were really uh, remarkable last night that show that politics seems to be uh, changing. And remember, on this podcast, we've covered a variety of polls that we've seen in the past year showing even Democrats are upset with the direction of the state. Independents are, are absolutely hungry for change. Uh, and of course, Republicans want to see change, but they don't have a party that actually can find its ass with a search party and a map on most days. So um, they want to see change. And I think some of the results in key races are, ex are, are reflecting the desire for change. So let me go through some of those. Uh, first off, uh, if you go to the Secretary of State's office, sos.ca.gov backslash elections, that'll give you a portal to look at statewide election results. In the statewide ballot measure, Proposition 1. Now, remember, Prop 1 is a, is, is a scam. It's these uh, bonds, $6.4 billion in bonds, uh, that are going to be paid for by cutting mental health treatment uh, uh, services. <clears throat> uh, the bonds would go not to mental health treatment facilities. That's a, an actual absolute lie. It will go to developers to, to build Section 8 housing, uh, uh, welfare housing projects, and they would put them in your, your neighborhood without any sort of recourse 
uh, on communities to push back. Um, Prop 1 actually eliminates the voters' rights to push back and, and uh, reject a government welfare housing project. That's why it's so dangerous. It doubles down on the failed policies of homelessness in California. Governor Gavin Newsom spent $25 million on the Yes on Prop 1 campaign. And of course, the lying liberal media in California gave, gave Prop 1 nothing but glowing and favorable coverage. And the, the ballot title uh, was very uh, uh, biased in favor of a yes vote. Look at these numbers, though. With just about 3.6 million, uh, $3 million votes in, 3.7 million. It is on a razor's edge. It is too close to call. 50-50 right now, basically. A small little uh, lead for the yes side. Uh, now, Reform California and our coalition, we spent $250,000 against Prop 1. That's uh, on a, a magnitude of 99 to 1 in favor of spending by Newsom. So Newsom and his cronies outspent us 99 to 1 on this campaign. Um, we spent 250000 They spent $25 million on ads promoting this crap sandwich of an initiative. But voters saw through it. They don't want to borrow more money in the middle of a massive budget deficit in Sacramento. And I think they are waking up to the fact that these politicians are making the homeless situation worse. So I look at these results and say, that's amazing. Uh, it shows that things are shifting. Um, sadly, I do predict Prop 1 probably passes by a whisker, but look how close we came to defeating it. I'm still holding out hope. Don't, don't worry about that. In the U.S. Senate race, we also have good results, and that is the fact that uh, Steve Garvey has made it in the runoff. This is the first time in 10 years that we will actually have a Republican to choose from in the U.S. Senate race. We've always been shut out. So your choice in the general election was being shot or getting hung because it's two liberal politicians to choose from. Now we actually get a choice, which means we can actually present an alternative vision, a, 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 our philosophy. And, and if, if you don't make the runoff, you don't get to, to, to get your message out. I know it's going to be a hard race for Steve Garvey to win, but let's try to help him get his message out. Weirder things have happened. That's what a political earthquake is all about. Um, but did you notice in last night's victory speech, Adam Schiff stood before his crowd of you know, rabble rousers and they chanted and interrupted his speech. Um, th this is amazing. I mean, the, the, the Democrat Party, we've covered this on this podcast. They are absolutely held captive by this far left extremist pro Hamas, pro terrorist faction uh, that's anti Semitic, it's anti Israel, and they are just complete misfits. And Schiff tolerates it. They're afraid of their own base. Nobody's covering this in the liberal media because they want it to be a secret. They know they want to sweep it under the rug. But you know, did you see the, the the footage? Here it is. From what a thing. <laughs> Ceasefire. Uh, yeah. Never again is now. I want to thank hollering. you all. Look at the nose rings and just. Just a weird. What is the person doing with so a, a COVID mask on? Come on, dude. Roughing each other up. We, uh. Yeah, this continued for a while. We are so lucky. Absolute chaos. Absolute chaos. That's what you're going to get with Democrats. They cannot stand up to their own rabid base of anti Semitic, pro terrorist, pro Hamas uh, activists. Um, I think that. Schiff is more vulnerable than people uh, assume. Moving on to other races, if you take a look at several of the U.S. House representative races on this page, you'll find that all of our endorsed candidates in key target congressional seats did quite well on uh, Tuesday night. Again, results can shift a bit, but they are really well positioned in these initial results, uh, as well as in the state Senate and the state assembly. The endorsements we made of state Senate candidates and assembly candidates, with rare exception, we prevailed in the primaries in each of those seats, and um, uh, several seats are looking very competitive as we move to the November election, suggesting that we can flip them from the Democrats. So very happy about that. We're seeing movement in these seats like we haven't seen in a while. And then finally, in Los Angeles, the district attorney's results, very, very promising. 
George Gascon is a George Soros-backed district attorney who coddles criminals. As a result, Los Angeles has been seeing this massive crime wave, and he only gets 21% of the vote. 21% of the vote. You have to wonder, what the blank were those people thinking about? Um, but that means that 78%, 79% of the vote is against George Gascon. The candidate we backed is Nathan Hockman, and he actually made it into the runoff. And we now need to get everybody united behind Nathan as the law and order candidate in this race in Los Angeles. It would send an amazing message that we don't want coddle the criminal politicians or sheriffs or DAs to be in office, even in the blue city of Los Angeles. The Democrat voters there are poised to kick this guy to the curb, and he so richly deserves it. The whole mayhem that he has helped contribute to up there and the victims, the victims of crime, both property crimes and violent crime, all are the res direct responsibility of his failed coddle the criminal policy. So I love these numbers. These are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, again, uh, check out ongoing updates on our campaigns uh, as we pivot to the general election. Our top priorities, get those reform caucus members elected in Sacramento maintain our uh, congressional seats and maybe add a couple here and there because the the control of congress really does go through uh, california we will decide i believe who the house majority is uh, we also need to get behind steve garvey we've got to get behind people like nathan hochman in the local races in the november election we'll have a lot of school board candidates that we're recruiting city council county board all across the state but we can only do this with your help so sign up if you want to become a candidate let us know if there's a good candidate that you think we should be endorsing. We take a lot of feedback from our supporters at reformcalifornia.org. And remember, our ballot measures are on the ballot in November. We have a lawsuit abuse measure that we have already qualified that we're supporting. We've got the California Taxpayer Protection Initiative, which protects Prop 13 and blocks costly and unfair tax hikes. And we're trying to qualify Prop 47 repeal, which would make crime illegal again in California. All of those ballot measures need your help. And we have specific campaigns that we've set up just for those uh, initiatives to help qualify and pass those. So check it all out at reformcalifornia.org. Good results on the primary election. Uh, again, the votes are going to continue to be tallied, but I don't see some of these things changing <clears throat> uh, dramatically. Um, but we need to now position ourselves and pivot to the November election and uh, recharge our batteries. We, we left a lot of resources on the field. We, we knew that the primary was important in a lot of these seats. Help us raise the funds necessary to wage a strong battle in the November election. I think you will be happy with these results in the primary and even happier in November because we have momentum on our side. Things are changing. Don't give up hope, but do get in the fight. Go to reformcalifornia.org and chip in a contribution today. Share this video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.